Well, as we head into the final hour of trading, uh, the market is somewhat mixed, but what you're looking at, while it looks like carnage, a lot better than it was about an hour ago. I want to bring in Capital Wave Forecast Editor Shaw Galani. Adam Johnson is back with us as well. Shaw, I want to ask um, this last hour of trading, what do you need to see? Every single day, I think there's a message in the markets, and I think there were several of them today. What do you need to see to feel optimistic? Because for the most part, you have been bullish. Well, uh, for me to remain bullish, I'd like to see by the close and into the close what happened last Friday. I'd like to see the selling stop. I'd like to see the market bounce back and end up on the plus side, maybe up 100 points. So that would tell me that the coast is clear and it's, it's pretty good. Right now, I, I don't know that we're going to see that. We're off the lows for sure right now, Charles, but I think there may be some selling ahead. This is, a, this is problematic in terms of geopolitics, and I don't think the selling is probably done. You know, intriguing. It was intriguing on Friday when we gave up 400 points on the Dow, uh, went into the red, and then found a way to rally almost 300 points into a weekend. That was, to me, a buy signal, but that's fading away. I want to bring in Kingsview Asset Management's Chief Investment Officer, Scott Martin. Scott, as much as we focus on the Dow, right now we've got the Nasdaq up there. And to me, that's more perplexing because the big tech names are losing it. They just don't have that ump. And they're giving up big swaths of ground every single day. It was great when they went up 20 points a day, but it's not great when they go down 20 points a day. No, it hurts, especially as somebody that owns a lot of those, man. Uh, you know, look at, I mean, the big tech names are certainly off their medication, which has been low interest rates and easy money. And the market's got to kind of get used to that new kind of cycle. And to your question earlier, Charles, you know, what I think is going to have to have happen here is what I'd say a bar flow in the, in the markets, which effectively is a technical term for when everybody's throwing everything out the window and indiscriminately selling. We had that last week, but we got to challenge that again. And when that happens on some big volume, I think that's when the coast is clear to come in and pick up the waste. I think that low on the Dow last week was 25,060 or something like that. I want to follow up real quick with you on this tech stuff, uh, Scott, because we just had an expert on cybersecurity. And really, b big tech acting badly has been a theme all year long. And now there's a report out that apparently the journal is investigating Netflix. And it's going to be a very damning report about how tough it is to work there how mean these guys are, how they push their employees, uh, you know, like the culture. It's going to be about the culture there. Many people wonder why Netflix could not maintain that huge rally yesterday, and now it's down today. Is this kind of stuff hurting these stocks as well? Yeah, it's just hurting the overall mood, I think, Charles. You know, you're right. Big tech has been in a lot of trouble. It reminds me of my children this year, you know. And, and I'll tell you what is interesting, though, is like a lot of these companies, I think, just got over their skis. They got too big for their bridges. They made a lot of money. They let their success go to their head, and they thought they could treat people and their customers like anything they wanted. And it's realizing to them that they can't just do that. So there's going to be fallout from that stuff on Netflix, just like there has been in Facebook and Google and other names. But eventually, that'll be a time to buy them because, let's face it, these companies are are strong and I'm long them. Yeah, uh, the, the key quote there is a, a bruising workplace. Adam, okay, so what brings us back? Uh, you know, you and I talked a lot during the show yeah. and during the breaks. Do, we, do you agree we need to see this capitulation again? It felt like we had it last week to retest something, or would it be something that we won't even notice happen that, you know, at some point the market will find a bottom and slowly regain its confidence? That's its exactly momentum? what we're seeing today, Charles. You know, we talk about, uh, and I, I love, the, love the comment, the characterization of a puke bottom, because that's what happens, right? When everybody gets just so afraid that they, they literally puke at the low, that was what we saw last week. I think today is what we're getting. We're getting a retest, in effect. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be on volume, but we're trying to get people, um, traders, short-term guys, comfortable with the fact that um, we're down here. Um, are they actually willing to come in and take a stand? I'll tell you this, Charles. Since uh, 1950, there have been 30 times during bull markets when the uh, market has corrected 3% or more during a day. All right? That's what happened last Thursday. And two months later, 90% of the time, the market is up 7%. So if you're concerned about what's happening right now, recognize it's a bottoming process right. and we're coming into a very seasonally strong time of the year. You know, Shaw, on that point, uh, the S&P 500, the Ford PE now is well under 16. Stocks are extraordinarily cheap from a historical point of view, and you haven't heard that in a long time. We're in the middle of earnings season, Shaw. After the bell, you've got American Express, PayPal, uh, uh, E-Trade, um, e and a few others. Is there a name or a series of names that can kind of post the numbers we've been looking for to, to kind of help revive this rally? 
Well, I, I think the technology stocks need to lead once again, and I agree with Scott. You know, they've had some issues, and obviously they've been selling off. Most of it has been profit taking, but now there's not a lot of bids underneath them. So if they roll over, if their earnings aren't pro very positive, and if their forward guidance isn't very positive, I think that's going to be a real problem for the market because again, they're the companies that have led the market higher. They're probably going to be the companies that take it down if their earnings aren't good or if their forward projections aren't good. I'd like to see financials continue to do pretty well, even though the market is slapping them down because the market as a whole has got there's a lot of weight on it and that's geopolitical weight right. at this point and so the financials are bouncing however you know have to deal with that weight on top of them which is the market and that's All not right. going away i don't think anytime soon unfortunately